and to understand what that privilege is and what the responsibility of that privilege is and how to look at at the different situations and people and histories and where we are today. It's scary mm -hmm. in some ways and it's confronting and it's confronting a lot of the things that are basic fundamental beliefs of how I think the world works and how I think capitalism works and how I think our government works. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is sadly episode five of what has been an awesome series where we hit episode 1000 of the podcast and we are now clearly deeply into the thousands of our episodes. <laughs> we are talking about leading yourself and others in challenging times and there are a lot of challenges happening on many different levels in the world on personal levels, on economic levels, on geopolitical uh, levels, on uh, industry levels and all of that. Often we're going to be called to challenge our leadership positions and our leadership styles to meet the moment as things perhaps get more challenging. So Kira, what are your thoughts on the way that we can approach some of these things? You, and, and what comes to mind for me is the pandemic. Because during the pandemic, you and I had many conversations about a lot of what was going on in the culture. Uh, I was living in America at the time. We were talking about a whole bunch of different things and I watched you really evolve in your thinking about a whole ton of things. <laughs> and and you, you really gave me, uh, I was really privileged to get an insight into the way that you evolve in the way that you think to meet the times. So how do how does how does that work for you? Well, I want to say that when, usually when I feel fear, uncomfortable, not knowing what to say or how to dance with a subject, it means that it's time that I dive in and do mm -hmm. all those things uh, because that sense of, ooh, this is uncomfortable. I want to do it the way I've always done it. Uh, it means life is changing around me and I don't get to do that anymore. And I, I think during, obviously COVID was a, was a place for a lot of us to change about, mm. do we have to work in an office? Can we work hybrid? Can, can you trust people to do their jobs from a distance? How do you do that? How do you connect with customers that you can't go see? Uh, a lot of different changes of how our marketplace was changing. Mm -hmm. We also were going through a lot of conversations about racism and privilege and capitalism and and uh, I think uh, again uh, you and I had many conversations and I felt a lot of discomfort about how to lead through that how to have conversations about that these are the kinds of things that businesses don't talk about mm. um, and so, and especially with their employees and how do you, how do you help your teams go through some of the things that were going on in COVID and with um, the demonstrations and mm -hmm. all that was going on then. And so to be able to dive in and have those conversations that are very uncomfortable, I didn't think I had a choice but to have those conversations and now I have a choice because I don't necessarily have to be having those conversations and I find I'm uh, I'm fascinated by how if you want if you want to continue to live a good life the kinds of quality life that I want to live and connect with people you have to be learning and growing 
your leadership style, your connection style, what how you understand the world. And and for me, I love to learn. So part of that is okay for me, but it's still uncomfortable. It's like right now the church I go to is is having an anti-racism conversation. And wow. and we're actually inviting people from all of our communities to come in and talk to us about what we can be doing to make a difference and um and to think about my privilege and to understand what that privilege is and what the responsibility of that privilege is and how to look at at the different situations and people and histories and where we are today, it's scary mm -hmm. in some ways and it's confronting and it's confronting a lot of the things that are basic fundamental beliefs of how I think the world works and how I think capitalism works and how I think our government works. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's first on-demand workshop, How to Become a Coffee Consultant, available now online for you to learn at your own pace with a certificate available upon completion. Click the link in the show notes to access today for just 50 euros. Um, so I think it's not just leaders have to continue learning. We all have to keep continue learning. And how do you do that? You, you begin again. And I, I think it's funny. I'm right now taking three different classes and uh, people just keep calling me saying, Hey, I'm involved in this. How would you like, like to be involved in it? And I'm doing something called positive intelligence which is actually about confronting the judge in your head and how that oh, wow. judge affects the things you're willing to do and how you see the world, how you judge other people, judge yourself, ju judge events, judge the future. It's been really fascinating. Um, I'm involved in something called the Joy Project, which is actually um, connected to um, uh, the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu came together for a couple of weeks and they wrote a book called Joy. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a takeoff on that. And it's about how do we live every day with kindness and how does kindness and compassion actually come back to us in joy? And oh, so wow. it's a seven day uh, where they send you these prompts and you... And it just increases my awareness of how do I live with kindness um, every day. And so the two of those coming together is what is my blame machine saying and how do I dance with kindness? And I'm actually going into a class um, which is being put on by exchange. And it's really a leadership development class. But what I see it as is a connection class is instead of telling people what to do or how to be a leader, it's really about how do you hand out a question and have people work together to talk about how they see that question or that problem from different perspectives and learning how to do that better. And so... Now, you might say, what does any of that have to do with leadership? Well, it has to do with how do I want to live my life? Mm. What are the values of how I want to live my life? And is it crazy? Uh, it, right now, it feels a little crazy. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like I am, I am just at this cutting edge of understanding how I hold myself back, keep myself from um, doing things that are possible, keep myself from connecting in a way that that creates all those ripples. I always say I want to throw my little stones in the water and create ripples and change the world that way. And it means you have to throw out a lot of stones, connect with a lot of people, um, 
develop communities, try different things in order to create those ripples that make a difference. So I think how do we as leaders uh, change as our world changes? I think we as people, we as leaders, we as being a part of a community and a world need to constantly be changing. Mm. And, you know, one of the things that that is probably one of the fears that a lot of people who, who retire um, run into is, are you going to be relevant as you age? Mm -hmm. Are you relevant to the world today? And I think a lot of that has to do with, are you willing to begin again? Are you willing mm -hmm. to continue learning? Are you willing to see the world differently than you've seen it in the past? Because if you're not, you're not going to be relevant. No. It, <laughs> no. It's impossible to have a world continue and you stay back in... 2000 and pretend nothing has changed because it has a well, lot changed in 2020 oh i feel like the whole world changed on many many different levels and when you just look at the last 12 months in the last episode we started talking about ai i mean that change feels like it's gonna go warp speed from elon musk's talking about generative AI being sentient within the next three years, if, if it hasn't already become sentient. We're talking about the birth of a whole new species. And, you know, it's, I was very, I was very scared to try AI. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine, actually, his daughter said she was writing her wedding vows and she, she asked, AI to write her wedding mm -hmm. vows. And she said this came out and she realized, oh, I have to tell it what I, I care about. Yeah. You can't just say write wedding vows, right? Right. Oh, I've got to say this is what's important to me to say to my yeah. future husband. So then she wrote it again and said, these are the things I cared about and out it popped. And she said, I ended up using one word out of it. But she said it was really interesting to see what happened. And I went, wow, mm. I want to try something like that. So I was working on a project and I just put in something and out popped this thing. And I was like, oh, man, that isn't at all what I care about. So then I, I wrote it and put it in and I said, improve it and out popped something and I don't particularly love the way I write. So I went, wow, that looks pretty good. I gave it to my husband and he said, wow, there's no heart. What wow. Did wow. And she did not know where it came from. Wow. And, um, and so for me to begin to understand, oh, yeah, I still have to, part of what, makes us human is people can read our read what we're saying and feel the heart then it might not be perfect and we might not use all the cool words but there is something mm -hmm. there that it is saying that feels like a human being and so the more and more i'm involved and and i am not an expert at ai at all but it is kind of fun for me to write something up a marketing thing or a mm -hmm whatever, and put it in and see what comes out. And even maybe I've used it five hours over mm -hmm. the last three months. So mm -hmm. it's not something I use a lot, but I now can see, see things and say that was really my aim. Wow. So really, so to begin to, and I'm using not I'm using a very simple AI. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying for it. It's free, so so it's not as good as I'm sure some of the AIs are nowadays. But I think in using it, it made me less. I mean, I'm still fearful, mm -hmm. 
But I realize as, as a citizen of the world or a human being, it is really, I'm going to have to bring my questioning mind more often into everything I do. And I need to trust sources. So mm. when somebody I trust says, you should take this class or you might like doing this or this is an article I think might be valuable for you to read, I am much more willing to say, okay, I trust you 100%. If you say I should be doing this, I'm willing to look at it. Whereas I might not take something at face value from someone I don't know or somebody I don't trust or mm -hmm. someone that I know they have a different way of, of looking at what they care about. So I think it's a, it's a time where we are actually going to have to know ourselves better mm. and we're going to have to, I think, live with intention mm. more I don't, it seems it's hard to say more than we have in the past, but it's definitely a different level of intentional care, humanity that I think we're going to have to bring in order to be valuable and relevant in today's age. I couldn't agree more. The, the interest, I want to tell you a, a quick little story about AI that kind of, that happened last week. I was um, in an Airbnb and the experience was not pleasant. And the owner of the Airbnb was gaslighting me. And I very quickly realized that's what was going on. So having had therapy for gaslighting, I knew exactly what I wanted to do to cut this off and you know, I've started a new life here in Dubai and on the Emirates and I'm really, really enjoying my life and I did not want this experience to be marred by somebody who was gaslighting me. And so I came up with a strategy and then I went and I thought, I want to see if ChatGPT4 would give me a different approach to this. And so I said, um, you know, I had heard of people using ChatGPT4 as their therapist and I thought this would be a really interesting experiment. Wow. Yeah. So I told it, I said to it, I'm having an experience where I'm being gaslit by the host of the Airbnb that I'm staying in. Um, are you able to help me come up with a strategy to solve this problem? And it wrote back, I'm really sorry that you're experiencing this, Lee. Gaslighting isn't a, a, can be detrimental to a person's mental health. In order for me to help you solve this problem, I'll need you to share more specific details if you're comfortable doing that. Wow. And I was blown away. <laughs> the response, that response, it had, I felt seen by this AI. I felt heard. I felt empathy I felt compassion and I felt far too uncomfortable at the fact that I had felt all of these things by an AI yeah. <laughs> so great story it's uh and and by the way the 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 information that it spat out was amazing it was exactly the strategy that I had taken and even a couple more things that I hadn't even thought of doing. So I am, I'm mildly nervous, but infinitely intrigued, particularly as somebody who I consider myself, I humbly consider myself as a leader in the industry, uh, one of many, many leaders, um, but as somebody who doesn't shy away from technology and doesn't shy away from new ideas and new thinking, I hope that AI can only help improve me as a leader um, because the next generation of leaders that are coming up are going to be heavily dependent on AI. The, the world is not going to change. I mean, this, 
this has now created a, a vacuum that we're, we're headed in and there's no turning back now. So Kira, this has been an amazing series. I said to you off air, this is one of those series where I wish that I wasn't the host and I wish that I was a listener first because I would love to be listening to this series uh, for the first time uh, and, and taking all those nuggets of gold that inspire a person to think differently about things. You've definitely left me di- thinking differently about things in this conversation as uh, happens with every one of our conversations. I'm deeply privileged to call you my friend and I'm very grateful that you um, accepted to share this series, which was really important. This is the series that I saw when I started um, and it's awesome. So thank you very much. Oh, this, this was really fun. And I came away talking and languaging how you feel is a very powerful way to learn and grow and see. So this was really fun. You're a great person to dance with in conversation. I would dance with you any day, lady. Know that. <laughs> would you, uh, folks, if you want to connect with Kira, check the show notes for links to Kira's LinkedIn. Um, and Kira, will you sign off this episode for us with peace, love, and peanut butter? Peace, love, and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your you, day, lady. everyone. I love you too, Kira. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.